Hi, I'm Andy Jones, Content Editor for Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint. I'd like to welcome you to Color Lessons. Today I'm going to teach you Golden Reflections, which is an imaginary landscape, and we're going to do a few things today that hopefully will enable you to create successful landscape paintings of your own. We're going to work with a backlit landscape, and we're also going to create subtle kind of dappled reflections on water. So these will be a couple of skills that will help you in many different landscape applications. For all of our color lessons, I'm using Folk Art's Pure Artist Pigment Paint. It's been specially formulated to be very, very thick so that you can use this for a wide range of painting techniques. We can use it thin down for transparent watercolor effects, or you can use it with a palette knife for really thick, rich impasto work. The 20 colors of Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments are available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. And in the set, there is also a great color theory worksheet that is specially coded for you to paint on and reuse if you'd like to. And this is included in the kit with the 20 colors. So this is a great color theory booklet, and we also support this with an online video. I'm also using the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Mixing Mat, and this is a great tool to use in place of a palette. It's a reusable silicone mat, and it has spaces to put your colors out around the edge of the palette. Part of it is gray, so that you can see exactly what value of colors that you're using. Part of it's white, so that you can see how transparent a color is. It also has a quick guide for color harmonies, as well as a little vocabulary list so that you can keep yourself familiar with color theory terms. This is a great product, and I think you'll really enjoy using it, and you can use it over and over and over. It cleans off beautifully and does not stain. For all the color lessons, I'm using the Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brush. These brushes have been designed with a firm bristle synthetic filament, and it is great for canvas painting. It will stand up to lots of abuse. With care and cleaning, these brushes will last you a long, long time. They're perfect for canvas painting, as well as any other kind of fabric painting that you're going to do. I think you're really going to love these Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. They're available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint in a package of seven beautiful brushes. Some of you are concerned that you can't draw. Well, we've got you covered because we're teaching you how to paint, not how to draw. The color lessons come with a package of full color photographs so that you have a complete uh, set of all of the photographs for all of your color lessons paintings, like the golden reflections that we're going to be teaching you in this lesson. In addition to that, we have full size pattern sheets. So they're uh, printed out for you so you don't have to enlarge anything and you can transfer the designs directly to your canvas. So these also are available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. Okay, I have put uh, the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment paints out onto my mixing mat and I have titanium white, I have ultramarine blue, I have Prussian blue, I have some medium yellow, and then because I know I'm going to need more of this color, I have put some titanium white and some yellow ochre on my palette. So we're going to start by mixing up a nice um, light soft yellow color. And I like to mix my paint using a flexible metal blade palette knife and I will be wiping the excess paint off on a blue shop towel which is what I prefer to use. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to this white. I'm not going to mix it into all of the white, but just a portion of it because I want to create a light uh, golden color. And so you want to mix the paint by thoroughly mashing it and pushing it back together into a puddle. Flip your knife over so if there's any stray color on the other side of the knife, you get it thoroughly mixed into your main puddle of paint. Always clean your knife off before you go back and pick up any additional color so that you don't contaminate um, your original puddles of paint. And I want to add just a little bit more yellow ochre to this to deepen the color some. And we may adjust this color uh, by brush mixing 
a little bit as we work on the sky. So we're just mixing up a good color to get ourselves started. And I want to add just a very, very small amount of medium yellow to this, just to kind of brighten that color up just a little bit more. And again, I keep pushing the paint back into a puddle so that I've got uh, a nice uh, dab to work with when we start loading our brush. All right, so that's going to be our initial um, golden color. And I want to mix a nice, soft kind of aqua blue color. So I'm going to move a portion of my titanium white to a clean spot on the palette. I'm going to wipe the excess white off on a blue shop towel. And I'm going to add some ultramarine blue to my white and mix this in. And as you get more comfortable mixing paint, it won't seem very frightening to you. It'll seem very natural. Uh, if I want my blue darker, I'm just going to add more blue to it. But always be in the habit of wiping your palette knife clean so that you don't contaminate your puddles of paint. That's one of the most important things you can do is to try to uh, keep a clean puddle of paint while you're mixing. All right, so I'm adding some more blue. And the ultramarine blue is a nice kind of clean, uh, bright blue color, almost a, a primary blue, if you will. And so we're going to wipe that off. But I actually want to add a little bit of Prussian blue, and you don't want to add too much, but you can see right here where I've kind of thinned that color out. You can see that this is a very vivid um, kind of aqua turquoisey blue. So just want to add a little bit of Prussian blue to give this pile of paint a little bit more pizzazz. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more of that color because I want to brighten it up a little bit. And each one of you is going to mix a color that is slightly different. I couldn't match the color uh, twice if I were trying to paint an identical canvas, which I don't think you really want to try to paint identical paintings. Uh, but just, you know, we're trying to make a nice kind of soft um, aqua color here. I'm going to also add to this just a small amount of medium yellow. Don't want to add too much because I don't want to turn this green because blue and yellow will make green. But I want to shift this color a little bit more toward the aqua look. And again, make sure that you've thoroughly mixed your colors together so that you don't have streaks of paint moving through your puddle. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more medium yellow to this. Better to add very small amounts of paint and have to add more than to add too much because you can't take it away once you've put it in there. All right, so this is going to be the blue that I use in a number of different areas of the painting. I'm going to make some other blues from this uh, by adding different amounts of ultramarine blue or maybe some Payne's gray to it, but this is the blue that we'll start out with. Now, I also have a small bowl here where I have added some folk art floating medium, which I use to kind of thin the paint out, make it a little bit more um, workable on the canvas and a little bit more transparent. So we're going to take our um, three-quarter inch uh, flat brush and I want you to get into the habit of kind of holding the brush back on the handle. Don't hold your paintbrush like a pencil but grip the paintbrush back on the handle. This will make you paint in a much more loose and casual manner. So I'm going to pick up some floating medium and load my brush with this nice soft yellow color. Make sure to fill up your paintbrush, and then we're going to come up here to the canvas, and we're just going to start um, to lay in the yellow glow of the sky. And I'm just going to kind of come around where I think my trees are going to go, and I want to bring this color right down to my horizon line, which I just drew that on there with a blue colored pencil. And you'll see a little blue mixing up into this uh, 
yellow, and that's perfectly fine. Don't fret about that. It's just going to add to it, but I can still maintain my horizon line. So as I'm painting this, I'm going to just brush mix a little bit more yellow ochre into this color, just creating some variation in tone. We're going to add some of that. And you can see that I'm just making vertical uh, brush marks. Nothing difficult, nothing special. Turn my brush over, get some paint off of that side, and there's plenty of paint on my brush. And again, I'm working right down and just a little bit over the horizon line, but make sure that you maintain that horizon line because we're going to need that uh, when we start to put in our land mass. So just carry this color across. And again, it's just vertical brush strokes. I'm going to pick up some titanium white on my brush. I didn't wipe my brush off. I didn't clean it off. So you can see that what was on the brush is still there. And then I've added some extra titanium white. And I'm just going to start to add in some brighter white. And I don't want to completely blend that in. But I will take a shop towel and just show you. I'm just going to knock the excess paint off the brush and we're good to go. Pick up a little bit more white. And this is titanium white. And again, I'm just going to stroke this color on using vertical strokes, holding my brush back on the handle, not holding it like a pencil. If you hold it like a pencil, you'll paint too tight. And I don't want you to paint very tight. I want this to be a very loose, casual um, sky effect. And you should see the brush marks. You want to be aware of how the paint was applied to the canvas. I'm just brushing that on and I'm going to leave some of those brush marks just the way they are because I think they're more interesting that way. So I'm going to pick up some of the light blue aqua color that we made and I'm going to um, let's pick up a little bit of floating medium with that just to kind of make that paint a little easier to move and then we're going to come over here to the right hand side of the canvas and start adding some blue and we're just going to soften that into the gold color a little bit. And you see pretty quickly we're getting a very interesting looking sky. And you can see the brush marks that are in this area. Some of those are going to be fine. Some of them may be a little bit too much. So I can soften some of them out, but I want to leave some of the evidence that I'm applying the paint with a large flat brush and creating those sort of brush marks. All right, now we're going to move on to the water and I'm going to pick up some of that light blue color and a little floating medium and just brush mix that on my brush right here on the palette. And then we're going to come back up to the canvas and I'm just going to establish the horizon line. And you just want to paint neatly and carefully and try to keep it as straight as you can as you come across. And then as we work over here to the other side. All right, and then we're just going to brush this color across the canvas. Don't try to pretend that you're actually painting any kind of water. We're just adding in blue trying to keep that line as horizontal as we can and then just paint this on. There's going to be a lot more that happens to the water. This is just the foundation. If you need to pick up more paint and more floating medium, do that. And again, remember to hold your brush back on the handle and not hold it like a pencil. I'm going to continue to say that to you because I know many of you will want to put a, a tight grip on the brush and that's not how I want you to be painting. I'm going to try to make this a loose, casual painting. Again, pick up more paint and floating medium as you need it. And we're just filling this in using long, even strokes.
Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit of Prussian blue together on the brush and just kind of brush mix with the light aqua that was in my brush, creating yet another shade of blue because we want to have a lot of variety in our painting. So I'm going to stroke a little bit of that on, being cautious of the horizon line, and then kind of stroke back to keep my water very horizontal. So I can add some more of that darker blue mix in here and there. Just kind of stroke it on and then smooth those strokes a little bit. You can still leave the brush marks. You don't have to get rid of all of those. And there we've created the base of our water. All right, I'm going to shift to a number 10 filbert brush and I'm going to pick up some of the light blue color that we originally made and I'm going to add just a little bit more ultramarine blue and Prussian blue to it and just create a mix here on my palette. And add a little bit of floating medium to this to make it more transparent. And what we're going to do now is we're going to begin to establish our tree shapes. So again, hold the brush at the end of the handle, not like a pencil, and we're just going to begin to dab this color on. There's no particular stroke for this. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the original color and lighten this as I move over here toward the edge of the trees. And again, we're just dabbing this on. I want to create a light kind of feathery edge. I don't want you to try to paint any particular form and don't worry that it's not looking like a tree right now. We're going to have plenty of time to make it look like a tree. We're just getting some color on the canvas right now and we will come back and worry about turning it into something in just a few minutes. Adding a little bit more of my light blue color and my floating medium to the brush and coming back in here and just kind of dabbing this on as I come over here where I'm painting out over the sky, I want to use a lighter pressure and a little bit more of a dabbing stroke so that I create a nice uh, irregular edge to the trees. And then as I move over here, I can add more pressure and scrub more paint off the brush with each stroke. Again, we're simply establishing the shape of our mass of trees. So I'm picking up a little bit more of my darker blue color and we're going to begin to put some of that down here right next to our water line. And then let's establish a little bit of kind of uh, uh, the area where we've got some foliage uh, back here on a, a little river bank. So again, same darker blue color on my brush and I'm going to just kind of establish a couple of taller areas of some foliage and then we'll just create some shrubs over here I'm just dabbing this on we'll come back to these again don't don't worry about how it's looking right now we're just establishing some general shapes to get started. Just want to break up that dark a little bit that I noticed and kind of fill in some of these spots. It doesn't all have to be completely solid, but let's not leave big open areas of paint if we don't have to. Okay, so right now I think we're at a good place for us to pause the video so that we can let this dry 
and you can dry it with the aid of a hair dryer or if you have a heat gun you can use one of those or either like a embossing tool that you uh, might have for some other craft projects but we want to get this dry so that we can start to develop more intense colors on top of this all right we have dried our canvas um, and you may have noticed that the Folk Art Pure Artist pigment takes a little bit longer to dry than regular acrylics, and that's because it's formulated specifically to have some additional open time. We have established our trees, we've established sky, some shrubbery in the background, and our water. So we basically have the canvas covered, and now we're going to start to kind of add more darks before we add some lights to our painting. And it's going to seem like I'm going to be jumping around a little bit from element to element, which I will be. And I'm going to be changing the color on my brush frequently. And I'll explain it to you as we go. So there's going to be quite a bit of brush mixing on our mixing mat. And then we'll come to the canvas and we'll paint a little bit and we'll change the color in our brush and we'll come paint something else. So follow along. If things get a little bit confusing for you, you can always stop the video rewind and play it back to clarify anything that uh, I might have gone over a little bit too quickly or that something might have slipped by you. But this is not difficult work. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of uh, creating a landscape painting that we are going to be moving around quite a bit on the painting. So I'm going to start with my number 10 filbert brush and I've added some sap green and some beautiful Payne's gray to my palette. So I'm going to brush mix those together to create a nice dark green color. And Payne's Gray looks like black, but when you actually work with it or thin it down or mix it with white, it's a beautiful dark, dark, rich blue color. So I've got a nice dark color here, and I want to add just a little bit of naphthol crimson to this, just brush mixing this in. And the naphthol crimson is going to tone down the green because it is the complementary color of green. So now that I've got this really beautiful dark green color on my brush, I'm going to start again by holding the brush back on the handle, not like a pencil. And I'm just going to establish a little bit of dark here at the base of my kind of shrub or foliage in the background of the water and just kind of scrub that on. Pick up a little bit more paint as needed. And then we're just going to build up some really dark color. And this went down into the water a little bit, but don't worry about that. If it bothers you, just take your finger and kind of wipe it off and you're good to go. I would like to point out to you that you can see the raw edges of my canvas and I'm not really trying to paint them in right now uh, because I would probably frame this painting. If you are working on a gallery wrap canvas or a canvas that has the staple free edge and you don't plan on uh, framing your canvas, then by all means, please do carry the color all the way around to the sides of your canvas and paint those as well. So I'm going to now pick up a little bit of floating medium on my brush and I'm going to just thin out this green color that I have. And I'm just going to begin to add a little bit of transparent color over here, creating some irregular top to this shrub formation. And I can wipe the brush again. I don't want to do a thorough cleaning of the brush, so I'm just going to take the brush, pinch it between my paper towel to take the excess color off the brush, and then we're good to go. So I'm going to pick up some of our original light blue color and just mix that in with whatever green or a little bit of that darker blue that I have on my uh, mixing mat. And then we're going to come back in here and add a little bit of that bluish green color now onto the foliage. I'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue and a little Prussian blue and mix that in with this. 
and just reestablish a little bit of some taller foliage there and then I can dab some of this blue color on because I want to get some of the the atmospheric color into my uh, bank of shrubs here in the background and I can wipe the brush off again remembering it's just a quick pinch there on the shop towel to get the excess paint off the brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit more Payne's gray and this time I'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue and Prussian blue and just kind of mix that together creating a super dark blue we're going to end up making more of this super dark blue a little bit later on when we create some of the very dark um, color in our water but I just want to really layer in some very dark values right here along the water's edge and for landscape painting I really would caution you against the use of pure black because that's just such a strong color and it'll almost um, I guess the best description is it'll just punch a hole in your painting and that's not really what you want so just adding a little bit more dark over here just so that you can see we've got some light areas we've got some mid-tones and now we've got a little bit of dark so I think that's a lot of um, it's a lot of tonal change back here in the background and I think we're good to leave that area alone and we can move on to our trees so I'm going to wipe the paint off my brush and I'm going to pick up some burnt umber and I'm going to mix the burnt umber with just a little bit of our light blue color because I just want to create a soft gray brown color so I'm going to establish our tree trunks but I don't want them to be dark brown lines cutting through the painting so what I'm going to do is just establish a um, a tree line or a tree trunk that's going to come down from the top of the canvas just like that down to the water's edge and I'll add another tree trunk over here I'm doing this and I want to use a light pressure on the brush because I don't want to create really wide uh, tree trunks these are kind of slender saplings we'll call them And notice that there's also some breaks in it so I've got some dark areas some lighter areas it's not all the same color it's not all the same opacity because we're always looking for some variety try to remember never the same color never the same shape and never the same distance apart so we're going to start down here now and just kind of let this tree trunk come up and then go out a little bit and it can have a little branch off to the top there and I'm going to pick up quite a bit more of my light blue with just some additional uh, Prussian blue and ultramarine blue so you can just see I'm creating a, a really dull kind of gray blue color here on my palette and this is the beautiful thing about brush mixing you can create all of these different uh, tones and values right on your brush right on your palette and then when you bring them up to your canvas you can see that you do get a great variety of changes in color and value so that little tree there is a much grayer uh, blue color than the others and I'm going to just I want to add a little uh, bit of a branching out here but I don't want it to be the same height as that one so I'm just going to move up a little bit and do it just like that so now I've got four trees and I really would prefer to have five so I'm going to take that blue gray color off my brush pick up a little bit more burnt umber so I've got a little bit more of a brown color on my brush and we're going to add in one more 
tree trunk. Okay, so we have our trees established now, and I'm not really going to do much more to them. That's, um, they're backlit, they're soft, and we don't want to have them uh, create a really harsh um, look to our painting. So I'm going to, let's come over here and add a little bit more of a tree trunk there. That'll get lost in some foliage, so I'm not going to carry it all the way to the top. But I am going to just carry these tree trunks down into the water a little bit. And when we're done with our water, you're going to see a very small amount of this. So don't, don't try to make it more complicated than just a suggestion of a reflection. Okay, so again, I've just used my brush, just kind of brush this on. Don't worry them too much because when we're done with this, you're probably going to see just about that much of it. Okay, let's move on to our trees and we are going to establish some of the uh, green color to the tree. So I'm just wiping out my brush again on my blue shop towel and I'm going to come back and I'm going to pick up some of the original blue color and we're just going to just kind of give our trees a little bit more shape and again I'm just coming out here right over those trunks. I can hide them in there and you can see this color is a little bit different because it has some of the brown mixture in it that I've picked up from my palette and that's perfectly fine. In fact it's desirable to be able to kind of change the tones of blue that I have and I'm just going to carry some of this color back again picking up more paint as I need it to come back and dab that on holding again the brush back on the handle and loosely dabbing this on. Every time you create a painting there's going to be lots of variation in it and that's a good thing. You don't want your paintings to be alike. I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to this and maybe just a little bit of Prussian blue. And as you mix these colors on your brush, you're going to be in control of the color. You get to make the decision. Does it need to have a little bit more of the turquoisey Prussian blue or does it need to have more of the clean ultramarine blue? Those are decisions that you get to make while you're actually applying the color to your painting. All right, so that's enough of the blue color over there, but now that I've got some blue over there, I'm looking over here and I'm thinking that I want some of that color just added in over here a little bit. And as you paint and become more comfortable painting, you will be able to decide where and when you want to come add a little dab of color. And I do this a lot when I'm painting a floral painting. I'll pick up a color and add some to one area of the painting and then think, oh, well, let's add a little bit here and then a little bit there. So you get that color repetition going in your paintings. Okay, so we're done with that color right now. And I want to add a little bit more green to the trees. So wipe the paint off of your brush. And then I'm going to come back over here where I had mixed my sap green with some of my Payne's Gray and a little bit of Naphthol Crimson. Again, making a dark, dull green color. And this color is pretty dark and pretty dull, which is what I was trying to make, but I don't really want to use that much of it right now. I want to come back and add some extra darks in just a minute. So I'm going to take this dark, dull green color that you see here on the palette and I'm going to add some of my original blue color or whatever blue color is here on the palette. So I'm going to add some of that in 
and maybe a little bit more sap green because I want to make sure that this actually does look green. But I don't want it as dark as I had it because I'm going to come back and add some extra darks to this. So now I've got a nice dull green color and I hope this explanation is helping you understand that we can change the color very easily on our palette before we come to our canvas. And I'm putting this color on and it's a little darker than I want it. So I'm going to lighten it up with some sap green and some of the original blue color and just brush mix that in. And then I'm going to come back here and that's still a little darker than I want. So I'm going to wipe the paint out of my brush and add some more of the original blue color to this. And each time I'm making these adjustments, it's because of what I see when I put the color on the canvas. Okay, that's a much better uh, green color for what I want. And again, I'm just dabbing this color on loosely, again, holding the brush back at the end of the handle. And I don't want to cover up all of the blue and this uh, softer blue-gray color that's on there. But I'm just establishing some green areas. And you can see I'm just working this color on, just kind of dabbing it around, thinking more of tree shape and color than anything else. And then we'll add some down here. and just kind of tapping this on. If I need to, I can just kind of use more pressure and get more color off of the brush and just kind of soften this around. All right, I am now going to go back and make my darker green color. Again, sap green plus Payne's gray. And we'll check this on the canvas and see how it looks. And if we need to adjust, we can certainly do that. But we're going to come in here and we're going to add some patches of dark green. And that's not quite dark enough this time. So we'll add a little bit more Payne's Gray to that. And we'll come back and we'll start to add some very dark green color. Again, tapping it off working the brush, loose, casual brush work. And just kind of scrubbing that on. Try to work as loosely and as casually as you can. I know for many of you or people who are just starting out, it's, it's very hard to be relaxed when you're trying to paint everything just so, but be as relaxed as you possibly can and you'll be very happy with your results. Okay, I'm going to add even more Payne's Gray to this and I think you're going to find that this Payne's Gray is just an incredible color to use for so many different things. It lends a real depth and richness of color that you just can't really get with any other paint. Just darkening up a little bit. And we'll probably come back and darken this even more, but just adding some of that color over here a little bit so that we have color repetition across the canvas. All right, and I'm pretty happy with the way that this is, is starting to take shape there. And I know that there's more to come because I'm going to come back and put some more uh, darker color on the trees. We'll probably put a little bit more blue on the trees there. And then we have some fun stuff to do with the water. So let's get started on some of the interesting things that we're going to add into our water. So I'm back to using my three quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue and Prussian blue mixed together on the brush and I'm going to add in some Payne's Gray 
and we're going to create a really nice dark blue color. And I'm just going to begin to paint in a couple of little patches of this very dark blue right next to the foliage here in the background. And I'm just kind of jiggling the brush along because I want to create a nice merge of color there right at the shrubs and my horizon line. So just kind of jiggling and moving that color along and then coming straight across my horizon line and then letting it just kind of break. And then over here, we'll add a little bit more pressure to the brush and just work some of that on just like that. And don't worry about this bottom edge. Not concerned about that. Just want to get some of the top going. Okay, so now you can see that we've really established where our water is going to go. All right, we are going to now switch to using our palette knife to add some color and um, give the illusion of some ripples in the water. And I'm using a nice flexible palette knife that has a long blade on it and it's quite flexible as you can see. And so I'm going to load this with some Payne's Gray plus a little bit of Prussian Blue and a little Ultramarine Blue. And I'm just going to load the palette knife on one side and no paint on the other side. And I'm going to just put my palette knife down uh, using a little bit more pressure on one edge than the other and drag it along and see what kind of paint falls off the palette knife. So I'm going to start over here and we're just going to put that on and let that paint drag across. And I think that's great for what we're doing here. I'm just going to put my palette knife down and bring that out a little bit. So now I've got a nice wide reflection over there. We're going to load it up again. I've got more paint along this edge of the palette knife and much less along the center part of the blade. So I'm going to come over here and just push that along. And you could see that I've got a nice kind of even line there, which I want to break up. So I'm just going to drag it down a little bit, creating that kind of little broken line. I'm going to pick up more of the ultramarine blue and come and just kind of mix that in a little bit. And I'm just creating a little bit different blue, still paint only on one side of the palette knife and not the other. And I'm just going to set that down and drag it along. And you can see that I've created a little bit of a lighter blue and I just lost it right then when I messed with it and shouldn't have. So picking up some more ultramarine blue. Again, paint on one side of the palette knife and not the other. And I'm just going to drop a little bit of that lighter blue in there. And let's put a little bit of dark color over here and get a little bit of a reflection going just like that. And I'm just going to leave this alone and we're going to let this blue dry. And by saying let this blue dry, you're going to dry it with a hair dryer or either your heat gun or your um, embossing gun, any kind of heat source that you want to. But we need to let this dry thoroughly before we move on. So if you want to pause your video and let's have this blue get completely dry. All right, I've dried this um, pretty well with a hair dryer. Uh, you will find that the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment paints will take longer to dry than your regular acrylic paints do. I think I mentioned that before, but it's worth repeating. Because these paints do have an extra amount of open time that's built into their formula. Again, you can use a hair dryer, a heat gun, or an embossing tool, kind of uh, crafty heat tool like that which will help dry this paint a little bit faster. Just be careful that you don't get your heat source too close to the paint or you could singe or scorch your paint. We're going to come back and add some extra dark areas to the trees. Again, I'm using the number 10 filbert brush and this time I'm picking up mostly Payne's gray and a little bit of sap green. I added too much green then, so we'll add some more Payne's gray and a little bit of naphthol crimson. You could, if you wanted to, you could add a little dioxazine purple to this mix. 
for a little extra depth of color, but I think this really dark color here is going to get me what I need, and it is. It's going to get me some super dark color that I'm just dabbing into the trees, and I don't want to do this everywhere, but I have to create some areas of extremely dark color. Uh, otherwise, the trees just won't have the richness or the interest to hold the viewer's attention. So again, I'm just trying to think of an irregular shape here, not trying to paint anything in particular. Just worrying about a nice shape with some irregular edges to it. And you are going to have to mix some brains in with your paint. You have to look at what you're painting and ask yourself the questions. Is that an interesting shape? Have I put enough dark color on there? Does it need more dark color? You have to be the one to be in charge of what you're painting. You can't put the blame on anyone else, but you can always take the credit for anything that goes right. I think that's probably enough with the dark. I like how there's a little bit of light there and there's a nice break in the uh, dark areas there. So once again, wiping the brush off between the blue shop towel, that does a couple of things. It gets rid of the excess paint in my brush and it also grooms the brush back to a nice flat shape. You, you will never see me wiping my brush just back and forth all over a paper towel like that because that's not good for the brush and it keeps the brush out of shape. So always pinching and grooming the brush is the way to go. Then I also set my paper towel aside because I don't want a paper towel that's got all sorts of paint on it in my hand because that'll get my hand dirty and then you just get paint everywhere. So get out of the habit of that. Set your paper towel down. All right, coming back to my trees, I've got my original light blue color and I'm also going to add to that just a little bit more ultramarine blue. Just want to make that a little bit different shade of blue than I've been using. And maybe add just a little bit of titanium white to lighten it up a little bit. The more colors that you can work into your painting that are harmonious. So we're using the same colors just in different amounts and I'm taking some of the excess paint off of my brush. You're going to get a nicer effect. So let's come back and add some of this lighter color out here. Pick up some more on my paintbrush and add a little bit of that blue gray color here. And going to come back and add some of it over here to give the effect that some light is coming through the tree over here and maybe down here. I just want to make sure that I've repeated this color in several places so that it looks like it really belongs in the painting. And over here I can come add a little bit over there just to kind of have that color repeated around the painting. And I could add some down here because it's a little bit different color. And you just see, you've just kind of repeated that color and we've gotten some dappled effects going on. And I think that's a really nice um, effect to have. Just cover up the bottoms of those little uh, bits of foliage there. Going to wipe the excess paint out of my brush and pick up some titanium white and just work that into the brush a little bit and I'm going to come back and highlight those little bits there which also softens them uh, into the background a little bit which I think they needed and now I'm going to turn my attention to the effects of the sunlight on the water 
So we're once again going to be using our uh, long flexible blade palette knife and I'm going to take some of the original yellow ochre and white color and I'm going to add just a small amount of medium yellow. But just add a little bit of yellow to warm that up a little bit more. And we're just going to begin to add some beautiful golden reflections in the water. So I'll drag my palette knife along and I can just lick that down. And let it trail off can go back to the original color and I can add some right back here right at the horizon line and you can push this along it's going to take you a little bit of practice to get familiar with how the paint's going to drag off of your palette knife and some people will use a small trowel blade palette knife and you're going to get slightly different effects that I'm getting here with this really long one. But it's okay, whichever way you do it. And that's looking really lovely right along there. I'm going to pick up some white on my palette knife and lighten this color even more. And we're just going to kind of drag that or push it along. Drag it back this way. Oh, look at that. You get some nice little effects like that. And I can turn this. If you take your painting off of your easel, it might be a little bit easier to do than having to kind of contort yourself a little bit. But either way, we're just creating these nice little kind of rippled effects of sunlight on water. And that can come back over some of those blue areas. You can leave this rather textured if you want to. Just let's break up some of that reflection there because I don't really want to see that much of the reflection, but it is nice just to see a little bit of that coming through here and there. And because we did let this dry, I can put the yellow over the blue without any worry of that coming through. So I'm going to take this original color and I'm going to add even more medium yellow to it because I want to brighten that color up, make it a little bit more intense. And we're going to add some beautiful reflections here in front and let that drag over there. And I do not want you to play in this too much. If you put something on there like that, and it's fine, then leave it alone and come on, move down, add some more interest, you can drag that along. Don't want to overwork this. Just to add a little bit more in there. We're not quite done, got a couple of other little things to add in, but you're getting this nice, lovely effect of the golden sun on the water and I think that's so nice to drag a little bit of that yellow over some of that dark blue all right I think I need to let this dry right now and then I'm going to come back and add some brighter highlights and a little bit of blue reflections on the water so if you want to you can pause your video and let's have these yellow highlights uh, or yellow reflections dry and then we'll come back and we'll add some final highlights Okay, so we've dried this, um, and mine is not thoroughly dry, but it's, it's dry enough to proceed onward. You should make sure that yours is completely dry so that um, you stand less of a chance of uh, putting something on that you're unhappy with. But I want to take some of our original blue color, and I'm going to lighten that by mixing in some titanium white. Again, taking those same colors that we've been using and just altering them so that we have more variety in all that we're painting on our canvas. Because the more you can 
make your painting interesting and keep those viewers looking at your painting, discovering new and interesting passages, the more exciting your painting is going to be. So I've loaded up my palette knife. I'm going to take the paint off the back side there. So I've got plenty of light blue and I'm just going to begin to add a few of these lighter blue highlights. and cover up some of what I've already have on the canvas a little bit. Drag some of that along, cover up a little bit of the yellow. This is really nice, the way that blue broke up over the darker blue. Can come back and add a little bit there. Don't wanna do this all over everywhere, but we do want to create some little reflections and have some interest where you've got one color overlaying another color. This, the top of this, I'm not really happy with that. It looks a little too broken to me. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of uh, more color on the palette knife and I'm just going to stroke that down giving the top edge a little bit more of an even line there. A little bit more down there. And I think that's enough light blue, except as soon as I said that, I looked <laughs> and I want to put a little bit of blue right there just to break that up a little bit. And I don't have enough paint on my palette knife, so I'll pick up some more and just add a little bit more just like that and maybe repeat that effect right over here. Okay, so that's looking good with the blue and I want to take some of my original soft color and come over here where I've added a little bit of the extra medium yellow to that and load my palette knife up with this and I want to just concentrate a little bit more of this bright yellow right here as though the bright sun is coming right down the center of the canvas. Not filling it in solid, but just adding a little bit of extra right through the center. And I think that's very nice. And the last thing I think this painting needs is some very white highlight. So I'm going to clean my palette knife off and I'm going to pick up only titanium white. And right here where we've got the brightest areas of the painting, I'm going to just add some white highlights back there and let some of that just kind of taper down right here along the front. And there we have Golden Reflections. Thanks for joining me today as we painted Golden Reflections. I hope you had a good time watching how I created this painting, and I hope that you'll create it yourself at home. And remember, every time that we use that palette knife, we can create some great dappled reflections on water. It's a technique that I hope you'll use in your future landscape paintings. Join me next time when we'll be painting a beautiful still life of pears. It's our three amigos.